Hello, I'm Father Louis Skurdy, and I welcome you to Friends of the Word for our homily of the week. Today is the Feast of Corpus Christi. We thank you for joining us on this, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to be on our email list, contact me at fatherlouiskurdy at hotmail.com. That's F-R. And go on to our site, fatherlouiskurdyministry.com for further information and other homilies. Thank you. Pass this on to your family and friends and keep the word alive and well. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate And still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we listen to nutritionists, they assure us that we have to be very careful of what we eat and how it adjusts itself to our bodies. And there's a phrase that sticks out in my mind that I've heard more than one of them say, you are what you eat. Okay, so that's for the nutritionist. The manna that was given to the Jews in the desert fed them fed their stomachs. But the author of Deuteronomy did something very interesting. He got that that whole experience. What was manna, first of all? Well, manna is what is it? That's what the word means. What is it? Kozeh. You know, what is it? Manna. Uh, It came to the Jews during their journey through the desert, and it came only at night. It was like a a frost or whatever you want to call it, uh, a secretion that settled on the ground. And by morning, with the sun, it it cooked up. It it disappeared. So they knew before sunrise they had to gather it. They had no idea what it was, but they gathered it, made it into little cakes, and they were able to eat it like crackers. So this manna, what is it, fed their stomachs. But the author of Deuteronomy says, you know, it's good that it fed your stomachs, but the real message is that it's like God speaking to you. And every word that comes from the mouth of God will... feed you and nourish you. He says, the the author of Deuteronomy put it this way, therefore, let you be afflicted with hunger and fed you in the desert. Remember, the Lord feeds us who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And remember for 40 days, again, remember, remember, keep hearing that word, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live? But, my word, remember again, by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So, the author is giving us a dual message. Deuteronomy is one of the first books of the, of the Bible. It's part of the, the Pentateuch, the first five books. And the message is that God is feeding your stomach, but he's also feeding your soul. 
And every word that comes from the mouth of God should be our nourishment. What a, what a kick in the head, you might say, happens when Jesus, the word of God, is born. The word of God comes to us, and the word of God takes flesh. So it's not manna, but the word of God is Jesus Christ. Talk about every word that comes from the mouth of God feeding us. So Jesus goes through his life, and he, and he shows us what it means as, as God feeds us the love, the compassion, the, the forgiveness, the, 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 the multiplication of food. This is the word of God feeding us our hearts, our souls, and our stomachs. And that's the dual message of Jesus Christ, who is God and man, all wrapped up in one. And as he comes to us, he gives us the word of God in his own life. And as the word of God develops, and we get to the book of Corinthians, Paul talks about the the word of God like being one loaf. Like all of us are one loaf. one, One loaf of bread. And we, when we are doing something very characteristic of the early church and, and very characteristic of the Christians today, Catholics today, we break bread, we, we break the bread of the loaf, which is the Eucharist, communion. We are, we are one with everyone in this building. And not only that, because we do it here, not in this particular building only, in Wayne, New Jersey, because of what we do, breaking and the words of Jesus, the body and blood of Christ, and sharing that with each other, we are feeding ourselves, and we're meant to feed our neighbor. And we're meant to feed the globe, in a sense, the world. Because as God is feeding us, he's nourishing us to feed one another. And the unity that comes together is symbolized in the loaf, symbolized in the host, but symbolize more in our actions as we feed the hungry, as we, as we go out of ourselves. You know, Valentine's Day, we all, I shouldn't say we all, but many of us receive or give great big hearts filled with candy. I used to love my grandmother. At Valentine's Day, she would say, oh, just, just chocolate. Okay, so give a big heart full of chocolate. And she was very particular. Eventually, we caught on, but in the early days, we didn't catch on so quickly. She'd open up the box, ooh, and she'd go, press it, okay, oop, non equista, oop, non equista, oh, equesta. What are you doing, Grandma? Well, this is soft, so it's not this one, it's not this one, but this is hard. So she used to like the hard candy with nuts, and that's, that's where I got my love of nuts and dark chocolate, a hint, hint, no. So that's nice, and it says something, one day a year. And you know the next day they're half price. Isn't that a, isn't that a hoot? It's the same candy. It's half price on the 15th of, of February. But the heart of God is not limited to one day of the year. The heart of God is our nourishment, hard, soft, made for every one of us, individually and as a community, every day. See, God doesn't send us a heart filled with love, a heart filled with candy, a heart filled with bread. He sends us the Eucharist, which breaks beyond anything we can imagine, any shape or size we can imagine. He sends us the Eucharist, and who is that Eucharist but his son Jesus? And as, as, we, as we share the Eucharist, we almost become obliged to remember that we are all part of the one loaf, that we are all part of the one bread. Because it doesn't come without, without strings. When you give a heart or a Valentine card for somebody you like, it comes with strings, don't you? Well, you, the, imposition, the, the implication is that you love me and I love you and here's a symbol of that love. Well, guess what? This Eucharist that God has given to us, always one way, given to us, has strings attached, you might say, that we go and love others, that we go take the Eucharist and breathe, bring it to others and be the Eucharist for others. Be the bread of life for others. And sometimes we need... You know what? Not forget sometimes, every time that we bring that Eucharist in ourselves, we have to do it with prayer because it ain't easy, folks. You know it as well as I do. The first thing we want to do is we want to get even. We want to tell them where to go. We want to tell people what our feelings are. We want to express ourselves. If we are doing it in the name of Christ, with love, we have to go beyond our own very, very narrow worlds. 
very narrow perspectives and judgments. We see the, the hungry in the streets, the food that we want to give them. Well, here's a sandwich. That's not enough. Even if we go to the kitchen and serve, that's not enough. It's constant. God doesn't stop and take something away from us. Oh, you, you receive one Eucharist a week, that's enough. Or once a year, that's enough. No, that's ne- never enough. When we receive the Eucharist, it's an ongoing gift that we need to give to others without judgment, with forgiveness, and preceded by prayer and reflection. Because you know as well as I do, if you want to do it your way, without prayer, a lot of people are going to be hurt out there. But we'll feel good because we told them off. We'll feel good because we judge them. We'll feel good because uh, we, we made a, a, an observation about how they should get jobs and be employed and blah, 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 blah. And that's all they hear is blah, 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 blah. But if we do it with prayer in our hearts, share the Eucharist, who we are, share ourselves. If we do it with prayer and sincerity, we're doing God's work. We're living up to the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. There was one... I don't know the guy's name, but he's on television a lot. He wrote this book on how to eat properly and so on. And, and it's funny. The name of the book is, and he's, he's a well-known, but I don't know his name. Eat This, Not That is the name of the book. Anybody know the author? Well, whoever the author is, you know? Dom De, no, not Dom DeLuise. He's a comedian. What, what do you want to do with, like, a one-act show here? You want to, <laughs> no, no. Well, anyway, whoever the, the author was, Eat This, Not That. It caught my imagination. You know what? Maybe that's, that's a good model for us. To eat this, not that. To eat peace. To eat immortality. To eat love. To eat sharing. And not that. Not greed. Not hate. Not terrorism. Not victory. See, because it's the whole process, God is feeding us and we're meant to feed others. And as we eat and imbibe the word of God, and, and as, as Deuteronomy says, not by words alone or, or is God going to nourish you. We eat the word of God. We become the word of God. That's our obligation to share. To share him, Jesus Christ, and his love. St. Augustine put it this way. When we are showered in darkness and sin, Christ is our light. When we are hungry for whatever goals we might project, Christ is our food. When we are thirsty, he is our drink. When we are naked, Christ robes us in immortality. When we are lost, he is the way. When we are confused, he is the gate. That's what we are nourished on each time we come to to take the Eucharist. Yes, there are times in which in the silence of church you come to pray to Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, in the tabernacle. That's, that's fine. That's wonderful. That's, that's part of the miracle of, of what he gave us. But praying on your knees until they bleed is not enough. Being the Eucharist is the other part of it. We are partakers of the Eucharist and we are partakers of the one loaf and we are the loaf. So the respect we show one another is the respect that we would show God himself and certainly the respect that God shows us and and the nourishment and life that he gives us. The Eucharist today, yes, we can celebrate the miracle of Bolsano and Orvieto. Yes, we can celebrate carrying the monstrance through the streets with the Eucharist in it, and that's very important because that's such a significant unity in our faith and characteristic of the Catholics. But it's nothing. It's paganism unless we live the Eucharist. Jesus didn't say, okay, eat this and forget it, and you're you're okay. Eat this and become part of him. Eat this and and wash the feet of one another and and feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty. You know, it's funny because the people of of this letter of Deuteronomy, section of Deuteronomy, are being reminded. So Moses is reminding them, hey, remember what God did for you. Remember he took you out of Egypt. Remember he took care of you. Remember he brought you here. Uh, He's going to take care. Remember the bread in the desert? He'll take care. Remember the water? He'll take care of you. He'll give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Remember, remember, remember. But do something about the remembrance. And what do we do? At At the meal, the Eucharist? Do this in remembrance of me. 
the encouragement to remember what we are all about and what we are doing every time we break the bread, every time we celebrate the Eucharist. We are about each other. Recently, maybe Italians are unique with this, but I was out with four people, four of us were out having dinner, very nice place, delicious food. I'm not going to give the name of the restaurant, but you have to guess it. It's very good, though. Um, and we're eating. Now, probably Italian. I mean, just like, I mean, how typical. This happens more than once in my life when we're eating with Italians. We're eating, having a great time, and planning the next place we're going to go. Oh, do you know about this restaurant? Wait, you taste the food there, the calamari there to die for. I said, how Italian? You're eating one meal, and we're talking about another meal. Food, gathering, yakking, talking, and, and sharing a good time. Okay, two days later, I'm at my, my sister-in-law's house. We went to see the princess. That's my niece. The princess is a dance, eighth grade dance. Okay, this is like, uh, it's like uh, a coming now party, you know, a debutante. Okay, eighth grade dance. She looked magnificent. I had the prettiest girl in the world, so she's my niece. So she looked back magnificent. So we go in the kitchen. We took pictures. Go in the kitchen. There's food. I said, oh, Leon, you having a party? No, just us. And us, I mean, like six people. She had pizza, she had calamari, she had uh, sausage and pepper, she had bread, she had dessert, she had little sandwiches just in case you want to eat a sandwich. What, what is all this food? No, just so we eat. Again, what was it doing? We gathered to take pictures and see the, the, my beautiful niece, but we wound up eating and talking and drinking and having a good time and going on and on. That's it. That's the Eucharist. Now... Not pizza, not calamari, not social and peppers, but Jesus Christ is what we're called to share. So if we can do that in our individual homes, and I'm sure other ethnic groups do the same thing in, in, in a way, but if we're called as Christians to share in more than just normal bread for our stomachs, what are we doing? If we don't leave here living the Eucharist, and by the way, the word Eucharist means get Thanksgiving. And think of all the words associated with it. Communion, coming together. Eucharist, Thanksgiving. The words that, that speak to what we are supposed to be doing and are called to do. So if we don't leave here thanking, Eucharistica, thanking God for what he nourished us on and giving it to others, sharing it through our love, through our life, what they used to say, talent, treasure, and, and time. That's enacting. Putting it into effect. The Corpus Christi, the body of Christ that we celebrate. We are a people of communion. We are a people of unity. The synoptics, Matthew, Mark, Luke, talk about the body and blood of Christ as the bread and wine. They repeat, the bread and wine, the bread and wine. John, the gospel we hear today, talks about the flesh and blood. John... I mean, that's why he's not a synoptic. He's not one of the three because he, he does things differently. He, he goes to the soul so often. The other the evangelists are wonderful in, in their own respects, of course. I'm not saying one is better than the other. But, but John goes to the soul. And, and the word that he puts on the, on the mouth of Jesus is very interesting because if you heard it, you'd probably be grossed out. It's not eat my flesh and drink my blood, which, which is gross enough for those who hear it because eating blood... For the Jews, you don't do that. It's gross. And the word he uses for eating his flesh is gnawing. Gnawing on it. Really chewing it. He wasn't talking about this. His, his human form flesh. He was talking about the flesh that he would give after the, after the Last Supper and on the cross that becomes our nourishment at the resurrection. So, the little piece of bread you get, okay, it's appropriate, the size of it and all that, because of, you know, the historical changes from bread. But the, the Eucharist is supposed to be something that we really take in, really sink, sink our teeth into, really enjoy, and really become the body of Christ. Eat his flesh, drink his blood, and be Christ to one another. That's our call.